Hey, we're about to start the show, and you know the drill. If you've been here before and you have something important to share, please add a capital letter Q to your comment. And if you are watching live for the first time, please let us know by writing the word new, and we'll give you a nice little welcome. Enjoy the broadcast. So, do you want to know how I know that these uh, eclipse glasses are the real deal? Because I cannot see a thing. Oh my God, Jesus. So yes, I caught the eclipse bug as much as anybody else. Hold on just a second. Ooh. Okay, good morning, everyone. It's Monday morning. It's eclipse day. And the whole city is going crazy. I'm sure you're going crazy. Everybody's going eclipse crazy. Well, everybody in the United States and in Mexico. Well, maybe not everybody, but enough of us that are going to be able to enjoy the whole shebang. So what we've done today is we've prepared an eclipse special. But we do have a couple of important news updates that I want to share with you as well. So we might as well get started with those over the weekend oh no that's not what i wanted hold on just a second over the weekend i found out that oh pues hold on there you go <clears throat> over the weekend i found out that president lopez obrador was in town this past saturday to supervise progress along the final stretch of the new Guadalajara Highway, which goes from La Cruz de Guanacaxle in Nayarit to Ixtapa. Of course, since we are in the middle of presidential elections, the press was not allowed to attend or to follow the president while he was in town, nor was there a public ceremony of any kind. For that matter, there was also no indication or information as to when the final stretch of the highway will be concluded. So all we can do is wait for more news. And of course, as we announced on Saturday, there was a citizens protest in front of Gabby's on Mina Street to support the restaurant as it deals with legal action introduced by a couple of English speaking retirees who are not so keen on Mexican music. Curiously enough, only one local paper um, w offered or published a news report on the subject over the weekend, and it was as informative as what I have just told you. Not very much. Um, whereas, curiously, everybody reported the situation in Mazatlán a couple of weeks ago when the hoteliers were protesting <clears throat> against beach musicians. So, we still don't know any details on the trial or the position of the restaurant or the position of the offended couple. We may see more information in the um, following days or maybe 
What will happen here is that the local press does not want to make too much noise to avoid <clears throat> ruffling the feathers of the local English-speaking community. Maybe I'm just stretching. I don't know. I don't know. And since I was not there, I cannot tell you percentages of Mexican national locals that attended versus foreigners that attended. So <clears throat> if anybody has any comments on this or if we can um, hope to get more news in the near future, well, we can always hope to get more news. If there are any more news, I'll be happy to keep you posted. Moving right along, I have, well, we have an Eclipse special. That's what we have today. What a better excuse to enjoy a beach vacation for those that don't live near the beach than watching the Eclipse. Authorities in Mazatlan are expecting as many as 120,000 visitors in town to watch the Eclipse this morning. That's a lot of people, if you ask me. Um, but hey, you know, somebody showed me uh, a, a screenshot of a map that showed Airbnb uh, reservations in the United States. And there was this very clear line going through the states and areas through which the eclipse is going to go by. So it seems to be a big deal for a number of people. And apparently Google is in on the Eclipse Mania game. If you search the word Eclipse on Google, a short animation will appear on your device screen. So check it out after the broadcast or maybe do it right as you are watching. And of course, eclipses have been taking place in our planet for a long time, much longer than when Jesus walked among us. Even so, some think that an eclipse signals the approaching end of times. And this belief comes from a specific verse from the Bible that indicates that eclipse, eclipses are a punishment from God. And at least one member of the United States Congress seems to be on high alert. To each their own. <laughs> That's what I say. And uh, now that we're about to to witness the first solar eclipse visible in Mexico since 1991, even though we know that here in Puerto Vallarta it will not appear to us as a total eclipse uh, due to its path. I thought you might be wondering where in Jalisco it will be first visible, and the answer is in the municipality of Cihuatlan, near the border with Colima, and then it will be visible throughout the municipality of Cabo Corrientes, south of Puerto Vallarta. Then it will be visible in Autlán de Navarro, Unión de Tula, Talpa de Allende, and finally in Puerto Vallarta. The eclipse will start being visible in our state around 1040 in the morning, and the event will last approximately 41 minutes. Now, you may be wondering how many eclipses have been visible <clears throat> in Mexico during modern times. For starters, any person who was born in Mexico since 1970 has had at least one opportunity to witness a solar eclipse in our country. But to be more specific, the more recent eclipses that have been visible in Mexico uh, since... Um, uh, during modern times, that's what I'm trying to say, Duh. Uh, the most recent eclipses that have been visible in Mexico during modern times were on 19, in 1970, 1984, 1991, 2000, 2014, and 2017. And lastly, if you're wondering when the next eclipse will come by Mexico, and if for some reason you're missing the eclipse this morning, the next time a solar eclipse will be visible in Mexico, in our country, will be on March 30th, 2052. And the best place to watch it will be, and you have to love the irony, Puerto Vallarta. So there you have it. That's the eclipse-related information that I have put aside for you to enjoy. I also want to give you a brief update on something that I talked about this past week, 
<clears throat> if you remember, um, I mentioned to you that the young lady, Isamar, who taught me how to make uh, soy wax candles, she and the rest of her family have a home business selling Guerrero style pozole. I saw this, well, she sent this to me and I saw it published on Facebook. And I realized that they are on Calle España, not far from where I live. So as I mentioned, I went on, uh, I think it was Friday, Friday afternoon. Well, yeah, of course it was Friday because they were only available on Friday. They don't do this on a regular basis. They do it on Thursdays or Fridays, I believe. Anyhow, this past Friday, I went to look for the place and it is not far from El Puerco de Oro. If you know where El Puerco de Oro is on España Street, their house is just two doors down and you can see the landmark for the house because the house is called Casa de los Abuelos. Now, I was not entirely certain whether this was just a takeout opportunity, but once I got there, I realized that they have this beautiful garden and... Um, and you can sit down and enjoy the pozole right in their garden, which is absolutely amazing. So the good news is between then and now, I've had a chance to try the pozole. And here's an important lesson you may want to know if you are not new, if you are new to pozole. Pozole is this delicious a Mexican dish that is wonderful when you have it on the spot, <clears throat> but it's just as delicious if you have it the day after as leftovers. So, you know, I got my pozole on Friday. I didn't actually get a chance to try it until Sunday, but that was fine by me. When you are given pozole, by the way, if you buy it to go, uh, you are given the brothy part and then you're given a bunch of dry things to add to it, like tortilla chips and so forth and so on. You know, these may go a little stale if you hold on to them for a couple of days, but that's okay because ultimately everything is going to be combined in the broth. So everything is going to get soft and soggy and chewy and wonderful. So the short of it all, the good news is that this Guerrero style pozole was absolutely delicious. I had it yesterday um, and it was wonderful. The bad news is that other than this indication, you know, they don't have a web page. They don't have a, a Facebook page. So the only way to find out that this is happening is by following one of the Versailles Facebook groups and, uh, and seeing this posted. I know that some friends of mine saw it posted. So hopefully they will have a clearer way to communicate when they're going to offer this again. Just in case, <clears throat> I will check with Isamar, my lady friend that teaches how to make candles, so that we can find out when this is happening again. And this is something that I totally would want to try right on the spot at their garden. And I also want to give you a nice little reminder that um, we're starting to try out giving music appreciation presentations live online. The first one is going to be my re just presented Requiem Retrospective. It's going to be on April 12th at 4 p.m. this coming Friday. And I am so grateful to those of you that have already um, signed up for it. And uh, hopefully more people will sign up for it. It should be a lot of fun. Again, this is something that we're going to be able to see on a private viewing platform so we're not going to get into problems of, that are related to copyright with Facebook and so forth and so on and YouTube as well and of course you'll be able to ask questions and engage in conversation as we usually do as I mentioned last week uh, the presentation is about an hour and a half long we're going to take a little break in the middle of it and the beautiful thing is that you have an entire week to watch it if you don't want to watch it uh, complete when it is presented live or maybe you're not available to start it when it is presented live if you want to just watch the recording of it again the recording will be available for seven days after friday so you are able to enjoy it that way as well and just in case you haven't noticed i am not really here this is a pre-recorded presentation 
because like yourselves, I want to go see what's going on with the eclipse, given the fact that the next one is not going to come to us until 2050 something, I believe I said, and I certainly hope I'm not going to be around that much longer. <laughs> so there you have it. This is a little pre-recorded um, eclipse special for you. Um, as it turns out, I have been abducted by a unicorn and um, we'll be having some live broadcast, some uh, pre-recorded broadcast this week. I hope you don't hold it against me, but um, I'll be back soon with more coffee and headlines to share with you. In the meantime, I hope you enjoy the pre-recorded content that I've put together for you for tomorrow and the day after tomorrow. Have a great beginning of the week, and I'll be looking forward to reading your comments from afar. Take care.